Hi everybody, it's Russ and my Hammers 11. I hope you're all safe and well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon so you know to at any time we put new content on. We've got loads of great guests, videos going out daily, including today's guest. Now, it's a person you probably won't recognise his face, um, but hopefully you'll recognise his work. Um, particularly walking down Barking Road, opposite uh, on the side where, where Erkin's Fish Bar was, the big... Uh, Billy Bonds and Trevor Brook in mural that was done by this man he is uh, as I've just found out the official <laughs> urban artist of West Ham United it's Nasher how are you doing Nasher mate how's it going mate you all right yeah really well thank you um, how, how's things at the moment obviously in in this weird lockdown time you, you know it, it, you're still getting lots of commissions and uh, at the, uh, back in early March every commission disappeared Really, uh, because no one wants me in the house, uh, fair play. Um, yeah. but now people have kind of worked their way around the rules, and I'm doing people's gardens and I'm doing lots of shutters. And yeah. if I'm doing a bedroom, they give it 72 hours, no one's in there, and then I go into the house. It, we're just working our way around the rules yeah. now, so uh, money's coming back in again. Finally, yeah, good, <laughs> it is what, yeah, exactly, it is what it is, unfortunately, isn't it, at the moment. Anyway, let's not worry about that now. Let's talk about happier nah, times. When, about it, when we had live football and stuff like that, do you remember that? When, when they actually had football? I don't remember that time. It seems so uh, long ago. I remember them, Dave. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What the we doing... yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the glory <laughs> days. <laughs> so, what we, so what we're doing is we're obviously interviewing fans from all over the world, talking about their cool. West Ham memories, but also the players that might have meant something to them or the players they hated or whatever. And just, just again, to record these things of prosperity really there's lots of stories lots of individual stories that people are coming up with and anecdotes and memories which no one would have heard of or maybe you know your your friends have heard of but not like the wider the wider west ham community so it's really nice sort of this cathartic sort of celebration of memories while we wait for whatever happens with the premier league to cap up. come on it's changing yeah. every day so in terms of you nasha obviously a big west ham fan i can see by the two Beautiful mirrors at the back behind you. Uh, yep. <laughs> exactly, good product placement as well. Um, <laughs> in terms of in terms of your West Ham sort of fan career, so to speak, what was your earliest West Ham memory? Oh, see, when I was a kid, the first thing I was told that I'm a West Ham fan. There's no choice. I'm a West Ham fan. So uh, before I knew what football was, that was it. It was in my blood already. I had a West Ham cot cover and stuff like that. So oh, good. it was kind of drummed into me a little bit. That's my earliest memory. It just yeah. being drummed into me. Yeah, but exactly. Back, in, back then, we had a great team. So I was like, yeah, I'm, I was loving it. Yeah, brilliant. Um, Brooking, yeah, he was killing it then. So uh, Brooking was my earliest memory. And I remember he had one of the best flair players there were out there at the time. Yeah. And, and he had Bonzi behind him, backing him up. So... Together, they were the, the perfect partnership. Yeah, exactly. As you said, it was like it was all rosy, wasn't it? So like you started. Oh. Like, oh, it's easy. Oh, FA Cup final. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Yeah, easy. <laughs> yeah. I was talking to someone. I was talking to someone the, the, later this uh, later on. Um, it will be a video coming up soon. And and he said in, in his like twelve when he first supported West Ham for the first twelve years they'd won the European Cup they'd won the FA Cup a couple of times you know there was the eighty six he was like this is brilliant and then since then it's like this yeah. and he's like oh hey, well whoa, whoa, whoa. we all forget about the uh, Intertoto Cup didn't we do you know the what no days. one's no one the glory days the glory days European <laughs> glory no one's mentioned yeah. that although I've been watching the um, Robert Banks has been putting up on YouTube the end of season review videos. And right. uh, I forgot about the much maligned um, Anglo-Italian Cup as well. Do you remember that one? Oh, <laughs> play all like, it was like our sec, we was in the second division against their second division team. It was like, right. oh my God, it was so, it wasn't very good. Anyway, um, so obviously you drummed into it from an early age. I think that's a lot of people are the same really, you know, just about, yeah. you're a West Ham fan. My, my daughter, she was a, uh, three days old and she was in the playoff trophy um literally <laughs> in the playoff trophy so she was like wow was it. she was scarred uh, for life bless her <laughs> but what about your what about your your sort of fondest memories you know obviously you know from sort of the 80s onwards it's, it's three or four decades you know in terms of West Ham any sort of key things that sort of stick out for you might not be games much you know meeting players or whatever <clears> really. I don't know the specific date for the time but um yeah. 
I went to see um, West Ham versus uh, Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough had um, Jorginho and Ravinelli up front. And uh, I was like, oh my God, these guys are mustard. We know that. But I watched Jorginho bounce off Julian Dix. And it was just, he got bullied. And I was like, oh, it was so embarrassing. Like, it was like a little kid just bounce, running up to him, bouncing off him. It was like, he did not go past Julian Dix. Um, unlike uh, Zola did a couple of times. But like, yeah, he just literally killed the game off. And I believe he won that 2-0, I think. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, um, was... Revenelli had a quiet game, so um, I remember that. And I remember being Julian Dix was then my next hero, yeah, uh, as it was said. And and I think he was was he the top goal scorer that season? Did he get yeah. eleven goals? I can't something that. like that. There's a couple of seasons where he was banging in, oh, you know, ten goals a, a season from a left back. Yeah. It weren't bad. Yeah, we're too shabby, <laughs> what can we do for someone like that at the moment, you know, and, and just obviously the passion <laughs> he brings as well. But yeah, no, I know it's um yeah, that was a weird time, wasn't it? Because like that was that was sort of like Ravinelli, Giannino, they were like the, the first sort of influx yeah. of modern it, yeah. foreign players, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. And they had yeah. Emerson and they, as well, didn't they? The the Brazilian. Emerson, guard, yeah, right. The defensive Dixon. midfielder. Mm. But Jorginho just couldn't work out Julian Dixon and get round him and uh, he just gave up in the end. Bless well, him. He was going to cry. I swear he was going to cry at one point. Well, they obviously, the defenders uh, on the streets of Sao Paulo weren't, uh, weren't, weren't, nah. weren't up so much. For, they weren't mustard like Julian was. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, what's great is like things like that, because obviously that's little stories, little memories, which meant something to you and stick in your mind rather than, you know, I don't know. The, the FA Cup final or something like that. They're actually, and I think that's yeah. really, I think that's really interesting. And yeah, I, I forgot about Ravinelli and Janino and Emerson. I know, they were, were mustard, but like, I was a little bit too young for the FA Cup final, so I was about seven. Yeah. They didn't quite sink in with me, but yeah, I live on them glory days anyway because I've still got the program that my dad went. He he got it for me and stuff. But um, so I didn't really see much success in my days, really. Yeah, but um, one one game that really stuck out for me was is on my birthday, and we were playing Crystal Palace at home, and we were two 0 down, and um, we were terrible. And uh, for some reason, Crystal Palace were all over us. So no, and then we brought it back to two. I remember that. And Frank Lampard, Junior, when he played for us, still he equalised, and as soon as he equalised, all the floodlights were turned off. Oh, Do you remember, remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, they all, and everyone got out their fifty p coins, didn't they? Like it. it was like yeah, yeah there yeah. was a few games that season where that happened, yeah. wasn't it? And it was like mm. that was a uh, Wimbledon as well, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah so it was the so it was a um, gambling. Well, was it some betting uh, syndicate that's, or something? Like yeah, that. that's, that's what people were saying. Yeah, because they'd called it on three on two or something like that. Yeah, there was a few weird games. I remember that season. Also, I remember I think we played Newcastle that season as well. And before kickoff, right. there was like a literally like a typhoon in the middle of the pit like literally oh my god it was like a a, a weird that was, of, a yeah, yeah. was that the same season i think so well it was de- it was de- i was sitting in the same seat so it could have been over right, a space right. about three or four seasons i was centenary upper with my with, with my granddad and my brother so yeah they yeah you're right that was it was a weird time they were with those those and also it's your birthday so you always remember those games we always play tottenham on my birthday it seems and, no, and we usually, no, we usually we win <laughs> so we usually win right that's good. But it's not too bad. But anyway, I remember, yeah, cool. I remember the replay. We won like 3 0, I think. Yeah. Uh, Steve Lomas got the third, I think. I remember that. Steve Lomas. He was a good player. He was, yeah, he wore his heart and his sleeve. I liked him as a good, passionate player. Yeah, and I, I'm watching. Uh, there's him and um, and Tim Breaker are people that I've got this newfound respect for as players because right, as, yeah. a, as, as like a youngster, you know, you're sort of warm to the. The Di Canio and the Joe Cole and the Flair players, but actually, it's the low masses and Tim Breakers and people like that. You watch again, you go, he was good. Tim Breaker was a solid right back and he got forward and scored a few goals as well. So, yeah, it wasn't too bad, was he? He was all right, right. Anyway, so speaking of players, so it's nicely, nice segue. Um, as I said, yeah. we're, we're doing this sort of Hammers 11. So, the idea being is we, we find out about the 11 players that sort of meant something to you, whether it's positive or negative as coming up in other videos. Um, right. But the idea I'll being wait. is we try and keep it to a four, four, two. The only rule is you have to have been alive to see them play. Cause if not, it would have cool. been, everyone would have said the same bloody players, wouldn't they? I know. But, you know, so we can't put in Bobby Moore, but we could put in 
Javier Margas or I don't know, Gary Breen uh, okay. or Roger Johnson or something, you know, something like that. And so it means that yeah. we're getting quite a nice. I think we've had over a hundred different players have appeared in okay, the, in the hundred. Talking. Yeah, so obviously the main one, and I'm sure you probably have a few. But that's that's great, but there's a few which creep in, and yeah, anyway. So mm. so that's what we're doing. Um, so for you, Nasha, um, for your Nasha eleven, um, who would be in goal? Uh, for me personally, I always like Ludo McCluskey. Uh, Ludo was the man for me. Ludo. Ludo. I just, he seemed like a nice fellow. I met him a couple of times. Uh, he stopped and gave autographs where other players kind of hustle past. You know, he, he seemed that sort of player. Mm. Yeah, um, Mountain and goal. And, you know, I, I couldn't really fault him that many times, to be fair. I, I thought he was a, a solid goalkeeper. He was, and he was like... I think he came because he was obviously one of our, in the modern day, he was like, you know, no one heard of him really, wouldn't he? He yeah. just came in, yeah. this guy, and I think he got nervous. But yeah, he became a fan's favorite, lovely guy. Um, you know, as yeah. you said, he's, he's always got time for people and that's what's coming up. Mm. There's lots of stories that are coming up, like like your one where you just, you know, you always stop for an autograph or you know, we've had, the right, scan- yeah. had the Scandinavian hammers come on. Uh, one one of the guys from there and he like, drove, Ludo drove back from a, a player's evening to spend some time with them. He's like there around for like three hours. Chat. You know, it's, it's, it's lovely. It's lovely. Uh, you, don't, okay. don't, you don't get it anymore now, I don't think. Not to that extent. Uh, but, you know, for that particular era, there was loads of players like that who would do that, it seemed. Mm. Um, but anyway, yeah. put Ludo between the sticks. <laughs> Ludic McCloskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came from near Moscow. Right, lovely stuff. Although <laughs> technically... You know, Czech Republic is close. Yeah, it's close to London, <laughs> Moscow. Uh, we were never good at geography, were we? His fans, you know, if it rhymes, that's all everyone gives a shit about. Right, okay. Everybody. So Ludo in goal. Who should we have? Uh, yep. Who should we have left back? I could probably guess you left back. But who's going to be left? Yeah, yeah Judy Dix, hundred percent. The Terminator. Yeah, hundred percent. See, yeah. I was, I was so gutted about the. He left Twitter, didn't he? Because he got he got trolled mm. by West Ham fans because there was a whole doing the whole 11 and everyone put Julian Dix as number 11 and I think it was at the time everyone was pipping for Creswell because he was doing really well then but um, yeah he got trolled for quite a while and he left Twitter I don't know if he's ever come back no I wouldn't think so well, yeah that's the thing I think once once someone gets burnt once you know that's it but uh, obviously his daughter's still on Twitter and stuff yeah but, she's yeah. really active isn't she yeah she is and I think he's yeah, he's, a, he was a lo- you know, he's a lovely guy he's very quietly spoken and mm. but when he crossed that Different line person. yeah 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 yeah, exactly. And and so much passion. And, you know, there's not many people who are left backs who can instill that passion and that rapport of the fans. Absolutely. Yeah, he, yeah. Was, he was mental. He, he was a fantastic player. You know, obviously one of the, the, the best left backs now play for England. You know, yes. having, you know, I, I've, I've said it before, you know, obviously in 96... He wasn't picked because, you know, he had a skinhead or whatever they said. Um, uh, who would have... He would have taken a penalty in the in the semi-finals. Oh, smashed it, 100%. Just, just saying. Just saying, Venables. He would have... He would have, he would have <laughs> <laughs> bring them all back. We'll have another go. Um, but, yeah, so Julian, good shout. Left back. Uh, who's going to go right back then, Nasha? Mm, probably not, not everyone's number one choice, but I really like Glenn Johnson. I thought he was, he was yeah. mustard down the right... Um, he obviously went on to different teams, but hey, when he was there, he was full of enthusiasm. He was uh, energy on the right, which I really liked. Um, uh, I probably would have. I've never seen Frank Senior, Frank Lampard Senior play, so I couldn't no, really no. put him in. But so I see Glenn Johnson, and uh, yeah, I thought he was good at the time. Yeah, good chap. Yeah, good chap. And as you said, he went on to have a great career. But I, mm. I remember when he when he when he started for us, he he. he you know, it's quite it's quite sad at that time when you had the play, new good players start. You think mm, it's not going to be here for long because <laughs> no. you know it's like mm, we've had we've had a bit of a bit of form, and uh, you know as soon as he started playing well, I think yeah he played like twenty games or something like that. And um, in those twenty games, obviously he's established himself as a as a, as a fan favourite and a sort of athletic mm. right back, which we hadn't had for mm. a good shot. A long time. Yeah, good shot. Yeah. Okay, Glenn Johnson goes right back. Uh, first centre back, then Nasha. I am going to go for Mr. Passion, and that is the Ginger Pele Collins. Um, I think he's a top bloke, yeah. and he always wore his heart and seat. And I was disappointed how 
he left. Like he didn't want to leave, and he just sort of left. And it was a bit. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't like the way that went about. Really, it was a bit of like a whimper, wasn't it? it went out of a whimper. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he would have. Like I say, um, it was. He was really passionate, solid, and he got the odd goal here and there, didn't he? Um, yeah. Yeah. Always gave hundred ten percent. You yeah. can't you can't ever fault anyone giving like 110 percent, can you? No, uh, and I and I call him a um, adopted Cockney because like you know he right. just he just got it got it you know what I mean he still lives around the area, you know mm-hmm. he came from Cardiff you know youngish lad when he came, um, and he get he got the fans and I think the second his second spell, even more so than the first spell. The first spell was was good. I think that yeah. second spell really established himself and obviously absolutely la- latter end. When he was really, you know, he was, you know, he's lugging his guts up, literally, you know, trying to, mm-hmm. you know, he's really trying. But no, good shout. Yeah. Ginger's in. So, uh, and who's Ginger going to partner in the middle? He's one of the best players I've ever seen, uh, personally, was Rio Ferdinand. Mm. Um, one of the most gifted players I've ever seen, quite for the Youth Academy. Yeah. Ridiculously good. Um, he obviously went off, like they all do. But, um, yeah, brilliant. The gifted player. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and stylish, and he, oh. he's a typical, you know, everyone's getting talks about, and you know, talks about the West Ham way. He was the West Ham way, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He was a defender who could easily have played in any position. Any He'd probably position. do a good job in goal, to be honest. He's big enough, yeah. and, and still be the, arguably the best player in that, in that team. You know, he was awesome. Yeah, he, he used was to take awesome. it forward from the back, didn't he? He used to take on pretty much as many players as possible. Yeah, well, I think more so when he was at West Ham, when he went to Leeds and particularly Man United, it was almost yeah. that Ferguson wanted him as a defender, not as a ball player. Mm. I think if he became, if he, you know, obviously hindsight's a great thing, but if uh-huh. he if he maintained that ball playing sort of mentality, he would be in the same breath as yeah. people like Barese and people yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was yeah. that good. He was that good. Yeah. Obviously, we saw it all at an early age, how good he was. That's it. Nice, 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 nice. That's a good, strong goalkeeper and back four. Right, let's go for left wing. Then, Nash, who have you got left wing? Oh, uh, I'm scared to say it, right? Uh, Pyatt. Yeah. I'm sorry. I know he snaked at the end, but um, he carried that team. He must have been a hunchback because he carried that team for quite a few seasons. Um, I've never seen anything like since De Canio. Everywhere, wasn't he? He was like, if he could play in goal as well, he played in goal. So he's taking the free kicks, taking the corners, taking the penalty. It's just everywhere, wasn't he? Yeah. Like, he's a special so, player. He was a special player, and you know, yeah. and and you do have the mercurial, and you know, and and as with mercurial players like him, you get the baggage yeah. with it. You just do. And he, he, I mean, he left, he left Marseille to come to us the same way he left us to go back to Marseille. And Marseille yeah, welcomed him back. So, you know, it's like they knew how much of a good player he was. So when he came back, he went, yeah, straight away. But yeah, um, yeah, he's he's the best player I've ever seen play for West Ham. Technically the best player, you know, because... Yeah, one well, of the best free kick takers easily. Without oh, shadow of that. Oh, but he just like... And there was nothing of him. A little stumpy bloke, weren't he, really? Wasn't exactly. He wasn't particularly quick. It was, you know... No. Was, but he just could be, you know, I, I think it was... I think it was he was playing Everton or Liverpool... And he'd been off, for, been injured for a couple of games, and he was on the bench. And we were playing Liverpool. I think it might be Liverpool, could have been Everton. And literally, the crowd were just chanting, singing the song until he got on. And he came on, and he did one of his little little turny, like, slidey things he did. And everyone was like, "Yeah, Yay! <laughs> you know that didn't happen a lot of West Ham in that." But yeah, no, big fan. No, no. Big fan. Big fan of Pyatt. Okay, yeah. As you said, yeah, what happened afterwards it happened afterwards. But you know, if that season half, every two seasons he was here, he brought a lot of joy, you know, as a as a West Ham mm-hmm. fan, you know, there's not many Ballon d'Or nominees play for West Ham. And he was, no, you know, thirteenth thirteenth really. best player or something like that in the in the world that year. So um, World Cup that did bring on to do the World Cup, didn't he, when he had that special season with us. He yeah. did the World Cup and he became like a high profile player just like that. It was, and it was very like, and, and again, th- that doesn't happen very often where you've got an international tournament and arguably one of the best players of the tournament yeah. plays for your club. Yeah, yeah. That never right. happened to us. They were Stevie Hyde, weren't they? Jesus. Exactly. So, maybe one day. So, uh, okay, we've got Pi out on one wing. Who's going to go on the other wing? Boya. Uh, uh, these, like I say, these are actually my personal favourite players. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Joe Cole. Uh, um, 
when he used to do his little showboat and his tricks and because uh, he was kind of like Di Canio had him under his wing and he was like trying to encourage his skill and, and influence and England won't go for a very good patch no. and every time Di Canio was interviewed he goes but there is something really good coming from England and that is Joe Cole and mm-hmm. I don't know if we ever see the best of him at England but I probably think we stuck him on, on the left all the time yeah, that's probably is, why yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah. Some of the, the showboat he was doing was ridiculous. I loved yeah. it. Um, uh, top bloke, I think, from what yeah. I've heard. And uh, yeah, seems to do a lot of work for charity and stuff as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. NHS. Hopefully. Stuff. But I mean, with Joe as well. I mean, Joe is the same as Rio. You know, it's like you know, and someone was, we were talking about the other day. Um, you know, no one plays has no one plays a free role anymore now. Do you know what I mean? No. Nah. Where. Joe Cole is the free role. You know, if you put him, you just, I mean, you would just let him be Joe Cole and yeah. you'd have got a lot more out of him. Um, mm-hmm. And I think when he went to Chelsea and England, obviously, they stuck him on, on a wing, made him sort of a winger. And yeah, you get glimpses, but I don't think you've got that 16-year-old raw talent, you know, at the FA Youth Cup final where he was like doing all the twirls and oh. that's what, that's what football is about entertainment isn't it? it's it's a sport but you want to be entertained and he would entertain you and Payet as well them together yeah. in a team cool oh, fucking hell have, have that have that <laughs> anyway who's, who's going to go in the middle who's, who's going to be your centre mids your first one then well, right more defensive I'm going to have to go for Bonzi uh, <laughs> you're going to have to yeah Bonzi yeah. have to so yeah Bonzi 100% yeah. without shadow without um, and he he didn't actually send a message to me uh, Percy, but he sent. He gave a quote from the mural. He was. It was a little bit. Um, it was a bit too much for him. He was a. I don't know. He just sort of. It's like an, almost embarrassed of it. Really, it was yeah, not that I over the work. It's just like he's done a mural of me. What he didn't quite understand. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Really humble guy. Yeah, uh, famously he hasn't got. I don't think he's. Uh, well, he famously didn't have a tele mobile phone. So he probably he still no. doesn't have a mobile phone. Um, but yeah, no, he he's so humble and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, I mean, when we named the the stand after him. He I've was that, like, yeah. he's, he was like, well, A, he was in floods of tears, which no nobody's ever seen before. And there was a wow. few West Ham fans with things in their eye that day. But, um, but no, yeah, amazing player and, and, a, and such a humble man. You know, to, to sort of say that about, about the mural, you know, it's sort of, yeah, it just, it just shows. I know, I was well chuffed. Uh, yeah. I've got it somewhere. I kind of got hacked, got hacked last year. I lost so much stuff, but. Oh. I've got a I think it's on the website somewhere. I can trawl yeah. it out, but yeah, it must the wicked quickly quote. I was like, yeah, oh, I'm happy with that. that's so cool. And who's who's going to partner Bonzi in the middle then? Uh hundred percent Brooking. I've got too many um, attacking midfielders here. Oh, oh, it doesn't right. matter. Bon, Bon's going to have to do a lot of work then, at least. So yeah, we'll, yeah Brooking it. That Brookin. Matter, does it? Yeah, Brooking, Trevor. Brooking, Mister. Yeah, I, I, I love Trevor Brooking. I thought in in when I was a kid, that was it. He was the, he was the bee's knees. He was. That's yeah. the player I wanted to be. But yeah. I never was. But, you know, I, mean, I could try to be. <laughs> exactly. And, and the only headed goal he ever scored, or was it head or was it off his face? Doesn't matter. It was, know, was it's the FA Cup final, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> he was so cool. But it's like, you know, he was so ahead of his time as a player. Um, I, mean, I, I mean, I wasn't around to see him. So it's like, for me, it's like, I'm sort of living all these memories through listening to people like yourself and others just talking about him. Um, and... Right. And yeah, I mean, you know, absolute, you know, bogs of pitches he had to play on. Could you imagine him now in his prime playing like on, the, you know, the bowling greens that are Premier League wow. team? It'd have been it amazing. That'd have been amazing. But yeah, so Bonds and Brooklyn are quite, like, I was like really young. I was sort of like under 10 or something watching them still playing then. But like, yeah, so they were the earliest memories I've got of West Ham of, of yeah. football players. Um, yeah, not, good. I'd love not, to see. Yeah. Not a bad couple to have it, you know, couple of yeah, couple of place to have as your earliest memories. Um, not not, really. I think mine was Peter Butler uh, and uh, and wow. uh, and Peter Butler and Mark Robson or something like that. So it's, I think you've got wow. you, you've beaten me on top trumps, that's for sure. We've been doing that. <laughs> so all right, we've got Bonzi and Brooklyn in the in the middles up front. Who's going to grab the goals for the National Eleven? Who's your first striker? Right. Well, I'm going to get a, a creative striker. Uh, now these two are always under the knob. who should uh, partner the other guy but yeah. I've gone for Di Canio yeah. ahead of McAvenny. Um I thought McAvenny back at the time was was brilliant uh, and I've watched him play millions of times but like Di Canio 
Um, because I've never seen anything like, quite like it. I say since, yeah, he was just a, it brought, one minute he'd be st- like sulking, the next minute he's running up and down. Then he scored the best goal in the world. Next thing you know, he's just sulking again. I'm like, it's a, you've not had any characters like that no. at West Ham for a while, really. No. Football yeah. in general, I think football in general, I think, you know, that, that sort of 90s period was, was the last, I'd say, period of, of footballers who were, who were fun. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. you had, I think it, it, it's so professional there, and obviously in the social media era where anything gets picked up, but, you know, you don't hear, you know, training ground stories uh, like with John Moncur, you know, would, you know, cut everyone's, you know, trousers up and, and stuff. You know, you don't yeah. get those stories anymore now. And, no. and I think Di Canio, as you said, he was... You know, I, I made someone, someone's talk to someone who's not a West Ham fan of mine. I do have some. Um, they, um, they, they asked about the Canio. So I just sent them a massive like, extended highlights of the Bradford City game. And I was like, just oh, watch that. That's everything. That is, that's exactly. Everything. Exactly. It's, it's him <laughs> throwing his toys out. He wants to get fouled. He's scoring. He's taking the ball off Frank Lair in a fight. You know, that was power. Brilliant. And again, he was box office, weren't he? Absolutely. And then like, same as Payet, you know, he, you know, it's some extent, you know, different, obviously different eras, but the excitement they brought to you when you came mm-hmm. on, you, you could easily have paid your season ticket just to go and see Di Canio because you don't know what he was going to do. Exactly. Well, I've actually met him once. Um, so when I start, first started doing this for a living 10 years ago, yeah. uh, my first job was to do Swindon Town Football Club. Oh, and of that course, is yeah, he was manager. Season, it, it, yeah, he was manager. So I got free tickets and we got to do the executive dinner after. And yeah, I caught him in a corridor and I said, I'm a massive West Ham fan. He shook my hand. I swear he should have played in goal. He had JTB <laughs> scoop for hands. I meant, it was like, uh, do you remember Kenny Everett? Ravelly hands. Yeah, massive yeah, yeah. hands. He's got, yeah, but then he goes, oh, I'll follow you in. And he followed me in and he gave a speech to... Um, all these Swindon supporters saying, I'm just a man, I'm just a man, or something like that. that you don't need to follow me around. You know, you've seen me come and shake my hand. It's like, I'm just a normal person. Oh. Uh, yeah, he was a legend. Mad yeah. as a bag of spanners, but a legend. Exactly. Eh? You wouldn't want him in charge of your football club, but you want him playing for your football club. Do you know what I mean? It's like, just because yeah, of what yeah. he brings. But, and he still, he still has such an affection for the fans as well, mm. which is yeah. really, and again, another, you know, adopted Cockney, you know. You know, he just yeah. got the fans. They just, you know, he, he, he just had this affiliation with them so quickly. Right, who's... Go on, right, go, go for sorry. it. The one you're going to say? So I was going to say, uh, I was recently on the, um, the Italian Sky Sports with that mural, Brooking mural. Oh, And yeah. it's Di Canio. I don't know what he was saying, but it was Di Canio <laughs> doing the commentary and stuff on it. It looked good. But he, he, someone said, like, really, some of it was subtitled. And he said, the reason why I stayed at West Ham, didn't go to Man United, because this was family. This is my family. It was like coming home every day. So. Yeah. You and go. you get that feeling with him, you know. And yeah, he, As I said before, he's doing his little lockdown video. He did that one where he's singing bubbles, doing keepy uppies. And he had like a 1950s West Ham, not like a match-worn shirt, one of his, but 1950s West Ham top on. Uh, and yeah. obviously... It's stuff like that it just makes a big difference with fans. That's particularly now when there's no football, people will interrogate yeah. all that stuff so much more. We literally, right? Okay, exactly. Who's he going to get partner with? Right, a goal machine, Mr. Cotty, yeah. Tony Cotty. I'd put him, he could just go hang for forever, and uh, you get the cadio, get all the other guys feeding him, he'd score millions of goals. Oh. Um, we haven't had many out and out goal scorers. Um, I think John Hartson may have come close to it once. He was nearly doing 20 a season. Mm. Uh, we hadn't had sort of a, an out-and-out goal scorer that I can think of. Really. We, people like, we get something like 10, 15, but not like in the 20s. But, no, um, not consistently, no. No, and that was probably the highest we ever finished, wasn't it? Uh, McAvenny, Cotty, yep. uh, the duo, and that's probably the, the Hado, really. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I would have been up front all day long. Um, if I wasn't such a twat, he'd have probably been the same. But you know, man, he went, he went up and done his thing, didn't he? Yeah, he did his thing. He did, yeah, he did. His, you're right. And I think even with Hartson, I mean, I mean, you know, Cotty was a natural. I mean, he was he was your archetypal fox in the box, wasn't he? Really, That's it, yeah. everything was scored yeah. within the six six to twelve yard line, you know. But he was back. He said consistently doing like you know twenty goal. You know, he scored over hundred goals for West Ham. Again, yeah. that's not something which a lot of people have done, or you know. No. And so, yeah, he was TC was like he was a fantastic player. And again, someone I don't think 
you know, I mean, these, you know, it's something which a lot of people are talking about, you know, just the effect he had on a, you know, obviously a big West Ham fan as well. And that makes a big difference. Mm. Yeah, he fans. still is, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, still a massive fan, and that and that sort of sums up a nice team. I think there's a nice bit of balance here. Now, you know, you as I said, to, <laughs> this would be probably first on match of the day. That's for sure. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, if it's a home yeah, game because obviously a home game, Paolo will be playing. Obviously, he doesn't play anything yeah. for Watford. So you know, five, you probably win five nil some games, but you'll probably lose five nil other games. But you'll entertain. Yeah, it's, it's well, I was worth quite happy with that. Yeah, and I, think so I was always happy with a team. To give, sorry, look on you go for it, man. Sorry, sorry. I was always happy with a team that showed they wanted to try and win, and win or lose, they gave it all their all. Yeah, but that's all we wanted. That's what you want, and I think that's all you want as a West Ham fan is to is yeah. to go out and have a go, isn't it? You know, not necessarily yeah. play defensive against teams you think you're going to get. A- pasting if you're going to get mm. pasting against them why don't you have a go at them and it's like a free hit like a bonus point isn't it so yeah you get something out of them yeah no i totally agree nash it's been great man really appreciate your time oh, cool. Thank it's you. been really really fun uh and oh, and you obviously much. thank you to everyone for for watching uh listen subscribe obviously nash is on instagram and stuff like that i'll put those links in the description uh and until next time guys take care stay safe bye-bye guys <laughs>